Hello everyone, today on Magical Girls Explains, we'll be going over Amiri Kazaki, nicknamed Emily. Anyways, let's begin. Amiri Kazaki is a 13-year-old magical girl. She is 154 centimeters in height, her eye color is red, and her hair color is blonde. She comes from Sake Ward in Kamehama City. Her soul gem is an orange heart located as an earring on her left ear. Her weapon is a heart-shaped devil's tail. Her rich in doppel is Shalimar. She attends Kamehama University of Frail School in the 7th grade. Amir's wish was that she was able to be closer to her older sister. In fact, her known relatives is her unnamed older sister. To be closer to her older sister. Amir's magical girl element is the dark element and her ability is charm. Amir strives to be the cutest magical girl on earth. She has a distinct way of talking and likes to give everyone a special nickname, extremely straightforward. Amiri is very easygoing. Somehow, she can gain the trust of anyone is almost no time. She runs a trouble cancellation office, where she gives advice and tries to help people out. It also functions as a hangout for local magical girls. The Doppel of Temptation, its form is a serpent berries. Well, the master of this emotion feels an affinity with her for a doppel, which behaves as it pleases, without any concept of good or evil. She also feels her own immaturity emanating from it. This doppel speaks directly into one's brain via ultrasonic tones, giving affirmation to anything and everything. The confident confidence or co courage it gains are enough to wipe away any concern one may have. Its comfortable words lead people to develop a great dependence on them, but because its well meanings affirms even people's aggressive or malicious emotions that infuse them, it may unintentionally guide its target towards the worst possible actions. Asuka Tatsuki and Sasara Minagi chase a familiar but lose track of it. Amir then appears and tells them not to worry. Amir then introduces herself. Sasara asks if Amiri was after the familiar. Amir says she was, that she only just became the magical girl that this is her first time meeting other magical girls. Amiri asks Sara and Asuka to help her, and unimmediately convinces them to do so. She then gives them nicknames. Sara says they'll need to track the familiar with their soul gems. Amiri asks if there's a spell that can do that, but Sara says she'll never hear of anything like that. As Asuka complains about Amiri's nicknames, Sasara senses the familiar. The girls beat the familiar only for the witch to appear. Amiri marvels at the witch and her barrier. Sasara and Asuka see the witch as unconscious victims in her lair. Sasara and Asuka then argue over whatever to save the people first or destroy the witch. Amiri says Sasara can try helping the people, which would provoke the witch, and then Asuka can attack while the witch is distracted. Sasara says it's a good plan. The girls are successful destroying the witch. After the barrier disappears, Amiri says she'll go home. Asuka and Sasara get her contact information. Sasara and Asuka muster that Amiri has a natural charm to, to her. Amiri narrates that being a magical girl is tough, but fun. Sometime later, Asuka and Sasara meet Amiri at the restaurant Walnuts. Amiri asks what the meeting was about. Sasara and Asuka say they just wanted to talk a little more. 
Harry asks about the restaurant, and Cesaro reveals the cook who is the magical girl they met some time ago. The magical girl in question arrives. Manaka Kurumi. Manaka seems to preoccupied with something. All three girls order omelette rice. Amiri asks the girls that what they want to talk about. Cesaro says there's just something about talking to Amiri. Asuka calls it a new discovery. Cesaro then tells Amiri not to worry and that they're talking normally. Minaka then arrives with the food. Unfortunately, Cesaro's meal is too salty, Asuka's is too spicy, and Amiri's is too sweet. Though she says it's surprisingly good. A horrified Minaka admits she was cooking absentmindedly. Amiri says she noticed Minaka was spicing out and asks if something has happened. Minaka explains that she's creating a new dish. In order to explain as a uh, vaporly for running ruining their food, she invites the three girls to try it. Minaka then brings out the Minaka special title pendling. Amiri, Sasara, and Asuka find the meal to be really good, which leads them to ask why Minaka is having a problem. Minaka explains the dish might not be appropriate for the restaurant, saying that walnuts has its own traditions. Amiri's response is, who cares? Amiri says the food is so good that she wants everyone to try it, and Minaka should put it on the menu. Amiri admi Minaka admits it, Amiri is right, and that if she doesn't challenge her restaurant's traditions, she won't be able to protect the restaurant. Minaka says she will bring the dish to her father's attention and thanks Amiri. Asuka then tells Amiri she can rescue people who have lost their Amiri and asks Amiri to represent them as a possible shrine. A confused Amiri asks if there's a festival and wonders how things may have come to this. A few days later, Asuka and Cesaro bring Amiri to a shop sending center. They can explain that they think Amiri would make a perfect advisor, since she puts people to at ease and can easily get the heart of an issue. Amiri is surprised by this, but Cesaro and Oscar reveal that Minaka's father approved her dish, and now her restaurant is even more popular. Oscar says it provides Amiri's skills, and says she'll like to introduce Amiri to more people. Cesaro says they want to open an advice booth. Asuka said that people would, could come to um, talk to Amiri, dramatically claiming it's for the sake of the world and humanity. Cesaro asks if Amiri is okay with it. Amiri asks what she would do. Asuka says she would just talk with people. Amiri says it sounds fun and she'll do it. Cesaro then says she wants to introduce Amiri to someone and sees that they have arrived. It turns out that Akira Shinobu Cesaro asks Akria if she can help out at the advice booth. Akria asks why it has to be her, and Asuka says Akria has a reputation for helping. Akria points out that Cesaro and Asuka can handle it, but they say they have to go and advise the place. Asuka is still reluctant, but when Amiri starts asking about Akria's way of speaking, Cesaro and Asuka split out. Narration reveals that Amiri's advice booth was a huge success. Mikayano is shown asking about someone she's in love with. Amiri tells her romance is all about sprint, spirit. Erika then agrees. The stand increases in popularity, attracting more customers. Funoriri is shown saying what she when she met Amiri, all her worries flew away. Eventually, Rinamami hears about the stand. The narration explains Rina is known as the most beautiful girl in Kamehameha City. However, because her beauty came from her wish, Rina is concerned about her surroundings. Rina goes to tell the stall and waits for the crowd den to den out. Akira walks up to Rina and asks if she's here for a consolation. Rina did, but thinks if everyone found out what she was would be embarrassing. She tells Akria she's just checking the pace out. Akria says the booth is closing for the day. Rina thinks she waited too long and asks if she can meet Amiri. Akria says Amiri is probably tired, but Rina says it's fine because 
I am Rina Ami. When Amira sees Rina, she develops heart eyes and calls her cute. She introduces, Rina introduces herself and Amira recognizes her as a famous model. Amira declares her nickname Rina, Rina Sama, because she says Rina is like a princess. Rina thinks being called a respectful heroic feels nice. Amira says she always wanted a big sister. She then says what's going on and tells something to Kyube, which prompts Rina to reveal she's a magical girl as well. Akria says it's a small world, but wonders if Amira has something to do with it. Amira says Rina must be a, the cutest magical girl in the world. Rina thinks hearing that makes her feel so much better. Amira then announces she wants to, par to partner with Rina because she wants to be the cutest magical girl herself. Rina says she'll be happy to have Mayor Mary as a partner. Amiri then says that they should all leave to get fruit cups. She also says she wants to introduce Ami to Asuka and Sasara. The narration says Amiri soon did now your heart. Amiri narrates that Rina is sparkling and she's so excited. Amiri's ability is charm. There isn't an exact description on what this ability is used for, but from what I know what charm means, the power of quality of giving delight or a surrounding aspiration, or a small ornament worn on a necklace or bracelet, it seems Amiri on how she can get along with people well because she wanted to be closer to her older sister could be a connection to why her ability is charm. Amiri's last name Kazaki means wood and small peninsula. Her first name Amiri means clothing and village. Fact 1, her illustrator is Dian Peru. Fact 2, Hanano and Amiri's heights are and ages are mentioned in Hinado's side story. Fact 3, the Japanese text on the back of the menorah, Mi X4, and Mayaka Senpai Radar are written backwards, hence the backwards English translation. Fact 4, Shalomar is the name of a perfume that became associated with the bad girl type due to many flapper girls wearing it during the 1920s. It's appropriate to its form. Her doppel wears pointed antica berries, also known as false strawberries or snake berries, as earrings. Fact 5. In the North American version of her personality story, I mean personal story, she references Bill Nine, a scientist in children's television series host. Fact 6, Amiri's VA is Akari Kido, who you may know for playing Hiromi Sugita as a child in a race, a 9-year-old Kazuni Yuki, and Rina Shankai in Akatsu Friends, Nezuko Kamado from Demon Slayer, Kate Shadow in Shadow's House, and Barbara Gin Genshin Impact Japanese version. And so, that is the ending of Amiri Kazaki in Magical Girls Explain. The next Magical Girl we'll be able to talk about is Shizuku Hozumi. So see you soon once that gets going. Anyways, thank you for looking into the explaining on Amiri Kazaki. If you might have noticed that my voice sounds a little bit choppy, yeah, I kind of feel like I'm recovered from a cold and... Yeah, it's kind of... A real nasty one, but hey, you gotta go what you gotta go, even through a pandemic. See ya.